the Lord will provide. Our gospel today is a familiar one, probably one of Jesus' most famous miracles, the multiplying of the loaves and fish. What many people don't realize is that this miracle is a more dramatic replay of the miracle that was done by the prophet Elisha in our first reading some 300 years earlier. A man brings Elisha 20 barley loaves as a sacrifice, the first fruits of his crops. And Elisha says, give it to the people to eat. And the man protests. How can I set this before a hundred people? It'll never be enough. And Elisha, reassure, assure, Elisha reassures him, the Lord will provide. And the Lord indeed did. Everyone ate their fill and they had some left over. Jesus does the same thing in our gospel, but more dramatically. Because Jesus multiplies five loaves for a crowd of thousands. And the message in both of these readings is the same. With the Lord, there is always enough. The Lord will provide. Now, I've already told you about my mom and her friends who knit for charity. In the almost 50 years my mom, her cousin Anne Marie, and their friends have been doing this, they've never had to buy a stitch of yarn. People always give them yarn before they run out. It happened again last week. Parishioners here gave me a huge plastic bin of yarn to take home to my mom. It was so big I couldn't fit it in the trunk of my car. It took up almost my whole back seat. And when I carried it in the house last Sunday, my mom smiled and said, we were almost out. <laughs> this will keep us knitting for at least another three or four more months. The Lord provided. I could tell you similar stories with our St. Vincent de Paul Society. Sometimes the need in the city is very great and we watch our account get smaller and smaller and we start to get nervous. And yet always, without fail, right before we hit the bottom of the well, either we get a big donation, a little windfall, or the people in need suddenly drop off for a couple of months and we catch up. The Lord provides. Now I know I've said this to you many times before, but it bears repeating because we often forget. So many of our sins are rooted in the fear there won't be enough for me. Many of our sins are rooted in the fear that I'm going to miss out on something. Many of our sins are rooted in the fear that I will fail. And these fears manifest themselves in selfish deeds. And if you're wondering, but why? Why does the Lord always wait till the well almost runs dry before he does anything about it? This is precisely why. He's testing our faith. It's easy to have faith when all is well. The true test of faith is to trust when the well is almost dry. That's when our faith gets strengthened. If the well was never in danger of going dry, we never turn to the Lord for help. We take his grace and his mercy for granted or worse. We may get so cocky as to believe that things are going so well not because of God's blessings, but because I'm so clever. I'm such a good organizer. I'm so industrious. Me, me, me. And God is trying to constantly get our focus off of me, me, me. And get it on him. When the well is running dry, it's not only a test of our faith, our trust in the Lord. It's also a test of our love. Again, it's easy to be charitable. It's easy to extend ourselves to others when things are going well. But the true test of love is can we be charitable when our finances are tight? Can we be charitable when there might not be enough for me? One thing I always give you guys credit for is your generosity to the poor. You always come through to the, for the needy. Whether it's St. Vincent de Paul or the Catholic Charity Drive or the missionaries that come to speak here or some other worthy cause. You inspire me, you know. You need to know that. You give me hope. Because to always come through for the poor like you do, in a parish that is not an affluent, in a city that is not affluent, is a testament of your love. We live in the reality of the well that's always in danger of running dry, and yet that doesn't stop you from taking care of people who have less than you. Thank you for that. That gives me hope as it should give you hope, because where there is love, all things are possible. Where there is love, the grace of God will be at work. And I will confess, sometimes my own faith is weak. When I look at the collection, the parish finances, when I look at the state of the diocese and the declining number of Catholics all throughout New England, and when I'm tempted to get discouraged, I also have to remind myself, 
that the Lord will provide, as he has always done. I don't know what shape or form the Diocese of Providence or the Catholic Church in New England will take over the next 10 years. But I do know that with people like you, the Catholic Church will not die. The Lord will not withhold his love or his grace found in the sacraments. So in one form or another, we will endure. The Lord will provide. And someday, I don't know if I'll live to see it, but someday Catholicism will grow and prosper again in New England. Don't be afraid to give yourselves to God. Don't give in to the fear that there won't be enough for me or I'm missing out on something others are enjoying or that I'll fail. Offer your barley loaf to the Lord. Did you notice the common denominator in both of those readings, in both of those miracles? It took somebody to bring an offering to the man of God for the miracle to take place. In the first reading, the man had to bring Elisha his 20 loaves, the first fruits of his crops. In the gospel, I love it. It took the little boy to offer his few barley loaves and a couple of dried fish and offer them to Jesus. That's what it took. Don't be afraid to offer your barley loaf to the Lord. Your time to encourage others. Your talent to help spread the faith. Your treasure to help the parish and the church in her mission of evangelization and her care for the less fortunate. There will be enough for you. I promise you that the Lord will provide. The well may get low, but it will never run dry. And blessed be God forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.